I mean, so I grew up on seven acres of forest in the middle of the woods in Northern California. I was the only child uh, and we had a TV with maybe three channels on it. Introduction to film and filmmaking in general was through watching VHS movies with my dad. I mean, we would go to the theater sometimes, but it was, you know, in terms of consistency and in terms of like, you know, uh, exposure to a lot of different stuff. It was definitely found at the video store, but I, there was this section in the, in the video store that had all these box covers with these insane images on them. The, the, the first real like visceral, scary, insane experience I ever had watching a horror movie was watching, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was, I think it was 11 or 12 at a sleepover with my, I think it might've been 11 actually, or no, I was 12. I was just so struck and uh, kind of mortified and repulsed by how like the sort of, like rather than that movie being, you know, a movie where its strength lives in like jump scares or whatever, it's really this like, you know, that was the prolonged dinner sequence in that movie with the family um, when, uh, you know, when, when I forget her name, but the, the final girl is trapped in there mm. and sort of how long that scene goes on for uh, just fully traumatized me. But I was also, you know, kind of uh, inspired and, and titillated by it. When it came to the first creep, um you mentioned that you uh were obviously you worked with mark duplass that's how like he you two kind of brainstorm um so you mentioned about found footage so when you were coming up with the ideas was found footage was it immediate like yes this is how we tell the story like you know like a standard narrative yeah it was yeah creep creep was always going to be a, a found footage movie and uh, it was really important for me because I think I'm someone who, you know, probably considered themselves a much more visually precise director before I ended up making that movie and being forced to make a movie where the visual choices are coming from, uh, you know, out of character decisions in the movie. And a lot of those end up naturally and feeling messy in a good way. Like that was a real great um, learning experience for me because then, uh, it sort of reminded me of what's what's important. You know, I think as a first time filmmaker, you can kind of get lost in like wanting to make your first movie this perfect thing. And uh, it was nice to have these, this totally specific to that movie set of rules that were applied to making uh, both Creep movies mm -hmm. uh, that sort of were able to guide everything and, and remind us of, 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 you know, what's important from moment to moment. Obviously, on top of directing the film, you also star in it. You're one of the two actors in the first one. Um, so just kind of general questions about that, more or less. I'm assuming Mark Duplass was always kind of like, he was always going to be, um, he was always going to be in the film, but... Yeah, I mean, I, that literally came about from us saying, how do we make this movie with just the two of us? It, yeah, I mean, I think initially Mark was talking about an idea that he had where he wanted to just he wanted to make an entire movie where he was just filming himself where it was just one character filming themselves and i don't think he had necessarily fully cracked it uh yet and so then it was through us talking that we came up with this concept that meant the both of us would be doing it and you know i am not necessarily an actor uh i I'd, <laughs> I'd never acted before you know i'd, I'd been in like community theater productions in my hometown when i was growing up but never like other than that it was never something that i necessarily strove for it was and so i think you know uh i've taken that experience and that dynamic and that feeling throughout all my movies like you know going from that movie to like working with like the me or ed helms or uh you know whoever you know a you know actors who've like worked with great directors and all that stuff like i just i just go back to like what helped me out when i was sort of you know uh struggling or trying to find a scene or find what's important or find the truth in it and um and that's just like relying on instinct you know and so uh it's it's a weird 
movie for me to watch because I'm not only watching myself sort of learn how to make movies and make narrative movies making that movie, I'm also watching myself learn how to act uh, <laughs> during the movie. You didn't really have like a script. It was more sort of a Blair Witch situation of you had a basic outline of what needed to happen from scene to scene and then you just kind of let like you and Mark just kind of did your own thing. What was that kind of like? And like as a director, were you giving a lot of direction towards Mark or was it were you just kind of letting him go and do his own thing? And then on top of it being more improvisational, I, I mean, I I was never actually scared. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was it was, it was definitely uh, all sort of thought out and controlled. I mean, there were moments when we were sort of filming these longer takes that Mark would throw things out there to like kind of throw me off. And what was nice about that was it was the nature of the dynamic of these two characters is that. Uh, I was in a position to to receive that uh, because that was, you know, what my character would be going through. And so it was nice for me uh, to sort of get those cues. The, it had been this movie where like 25% of it I like really hated, you know, and was really struggling with and didn't know the answer to, to fixing this issue. And then once we did that, it was like, oh, this, this is the movie that I want to see. This is the movie that makes more sense to me. But we really had to like do it and try it and and fail, you know, and and go back and adjust in order to, 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 to make it work. And it also felt even more euphoric once we got to the point of it working, having gone down that road and done the work, you know. Um, so obviously, um, even though there was some stress, some anxiety on your end about, you know, how the film would turn out, obviously uh, it garnered a lot of critical praise. Audiences uh, really enjoyed the film. Um, so once you kind of saw the positive response, how quick were you um, to start considering the possibility of doing a sequel? Uh, we, we had no intention of making a sequel <laughs> when we were making the first movie. And sort of the discovery that we had opened ourselves up to a sequel in, in, uh, you know with with the way we we finished the first movie was uh, a great one because I think um, you know it was it was a language that, that horror fans obviously understand you know there's there's the there's the you know the cold open but then there's also the idea of like this this ending that's sort of ending on a um, question mark or giving you one small piece of information that maybe opens up the world a little bit and that was you know ending the, the first movie with this uh you know cupboard filled with vhs tapes being able to make a sequel i mean part of our decision to make a sequel was netflix coming to us and and saying you know uh uh, we can't tell you how many people have watched this. I mean, that's, you know, one of the things that folks are striking about right now is that, that you know, that sort of transparency when it comes to the streamers and they're notoriously cautious with that, with letting that information out. And I don't actually know the number of people that have watched the movie on the on, on, on Netflix or otherwise necessarily, but, uh, you know, they basically said, you know, if you guys want to make a sequel, like, we'll, 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 we'll pay for it. You know, we liked the idea of kind of taking a meta approach with this movie, whereas like the, the, the cat was out of the bag at the end of the first movie. Part of the question of the first movie is, is this guy a real killer or not? Right. That's we sort of like exhaust that question as long as we can for 77 minutes, you know, in, in the first movie and before the reveal. And so now that that question has been answered, like, where do we go from there and how do we make this movie feel tense and scary knowing that? And so we did the same thing where we have this character announce himself as a serial killer, you know, in the first five minutes of the movie mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, uh, and then have her essentially not believe him, you know, and then sort of make the movie then be about these lies that he's telling. I think even with the first movie, I was super nervous, you know, cause I, I didn't, I didn't really understand the thing about genre fans, which is that like, this is a, this is a genre that, you know, people it, it's had so much repetition, you know, in a good way, in a bad way. And uh, anytime you're able to bring something new into the mix 
that throws people off guard, I think it's appreciated. And so that was what the great sort of realization of the first movie, which was like, you know, even up to our premiere at Sun South by Southwest, I was like, people are going to hate this movie. There's no blood in it. It's just two dudes being weird with each other in the woods. Like we're going to like get like, we're, they're just going to hate it, you know? And then like having the nice response that it had there was a real motivating factor. And then obviously developing the kind of cult following that it developed by nature of being on Netflix and being this weird ass thing that people could discover in their homes uh, gave us a little more confidence, you know, going into the second movie and like letting the second movie be uh, ourselves, you know, and be this like reflection of like all the goofy ass stuff that's in the first movie and sort of like that being the thing that we ended up shining a light on a little bit more like you know obviously trying to make it still scary in some ways but definitely like wanting to amp up the the sort of the humor of it um what was kind of like your mindset going into a like a very different kind of production and then um instead of doing found footage hard kind of doing sl doing more of a slasher i i mean the other thing that i didn't mention in terms of like my entree into horror was i you know came up going to the movie theater with my friends in the late 90s and mm -hmm. early 2000s. And that's when the sort of slasher revival movement was ha was happening, you know, starting with Scream and then all the other movies that followed. I Know What You Did Last Summer, Urban Legends, you know, all these kind of uh, movies that, you know, uh, mid-level, mid mid-budget level horror movies that were being made at the time. And so I was watching a lot of those movies. And then to go in and actually be able to design these kill sequences and you know specifically like the cold open is one of the things i'm most proud of having made uh you know the, this this sort of like slow burn of a cold open that ends with this gnarly um ankle slash uh mm -hmm. and you know being able to go in and actually storyboard that having ideas that i had instinctually uh, coming to life on on screen at the at the at the end of all that um and then being able to cast uh, actors who were super naturalistic and so I, I i got a lot of freedom to sort of um be able to play with that movie and um yeah i just i you know i i i really love it and love love sort of what we ended up with what's kind of a horror film that you always recommend to somebody yeah, I mean, I, this is kind of, this is like a totally boring answer. I apologize, but like, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely The Shining. I would say that that is the one that I will absolutely uh, recommend to mainly folks who are not mm -hmm. horror movie fans, first and foremost, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I think it is a nice sort of um, bridge or like entry mm -hmm. point if it's something that you're interested in. Like it's a, that's a movie that I've definitely shown to friends who are like, I'm not a horror person at all, but I've mm -hmm. like made them watch that movie. Just because I also think that film exists on, an, on another level outside of horror. It's almost mm -hmm. like got this crazy metaphysical element to mm -hmm. it. And then it's something, it's a movie where I also, also always find myself uh, noticing something new mm -hmm. in it every time I watch it, whether it's, you know, a, a, you know, a prop that's in the background or uh, mm. a subtle performance thing or whatever. Um, I, I just find that movie to be uh, an endless, an endless mm. gift.